Autumn is one of my favorite times of the year. I just love the changing temperatures. I love when it gets cooler. I love watching the leaves on the trees change color. But I am reminded that my window of opportunity to have these beautiful green leaves and flowers all around me is um, about to end. We are about to enter winter. And so I was inspired to pull some blooms and leaves off the trees and work some projects with them while I still can. For this project, I am doing a watercolor leaf print using just one color and a couple of simple tools. I have watercolor paper, I have a little spray bottle with just water in it, and a flat one inch uh, soft brush. So I'm going to show you how you can start with something as simple as a couple of leaves and turn it into something beautiful. I am going to use this for one of my handmade journals, but you could certainly use this for any type of art project that you have in mind. And by the way, I do show a quick preview of how that journal turned out at the end of this video, so be sure to check that out. The first thing I did was to go out and collect my leaves, and I just picked up mostly maple leaves just because that's the shape and style of leaf that I really enjoy, but of course you can choose whichever leaves speak to you. The next thing you want to do is to rinse them lightly just to get any, if there's like any little spider webs or bugs or dirt, you just want to make sure they're nice and clean before you get started. Now I am working on the back of my leaves. The front side is a bit smoother, the back is where the veins are more pronounced and so that was the look that I was going for with this project. I am working with a watercolor by M. Graham and I have chosen to work with a color called Payne's Gray which is sort of a deep blue color. It's beautiful. It's one of my favorites. Once I have my paint on my palette I then add a little bit of water at a time until I have it to the right consistency. It's hard to explain exactly how much water you'll need for the paint. It really depends on the paint that you're using and the effect that you're looking for. So I would highly recommend testing this out on a scrap piece of paper first until you get the desired results. I am misting the front and the back surface of my paper and I'm only misting it just lightly. If you get your paper really, really wet, you're gonna have a different effect. You're going to have the paint sort of uh, dissipate a little bit more and spread out a little more. So if you're looking for a softer effect, of course, you'll want to work with paper that's a bit more wet. For me, I, I applied so little uh, water that my paper was just barely damp when I got started, and it was almost completely dry by the end of this process. You'll also want a nice flat brush. This is a one inch brush. Of course, you can work with whatever you have. I just found a flat brush made it easier for me to get the paint on there in a way that it spread nicely and I wanted it to puddle a little bit closer to the veins so that it would make some more pronounced line work. And I found that this was the best shape and size that worked for me and for my leaves. A little mister, a little spray bottle is really great to have. I use it for a lot of my projects with watercolor. I like to use it to spray down my paper before getting started. And if you don't have one, you could always just dip your brush in water and apply the water in that fashion. That would work equally as well. This is just a little bit quicker for me. And you'll see that I end up using this spray bottle a little later on to get a different effect with some of my leaf prints. So that's something that really it would be hard to replicate by just dipping your brush in water. Okay, and you're going to want to pay attention to how shiny the back of your leaf is. You're going to want to pay attention to, you know, the distribution of paint on there because that will affect the print. 
you don't have to get it into every nook and cranny. You're not, it's not actually going to transfer. But if you have a big glob of really dark pigment in there, that will, that may show up on your paper. And if that's not the effect you're looking for, you will want to sort of brush over it. So I'm trying to get a nice even coat on here. There are some variations, but it's nice and shiny. And I'm just going to sort of drop this down somewhere. And then I'm going to take a paper that I'm using just to protect um, the top surface of this leaf and try to keep it from shifting a little bit and when I'm transferring this. And I can feel where the stem is, and so you want to sort of make sure that you're pushing around the edges. And then you want to lift up as evenly as possible, and voila, there is your leaf. And you can see, you know, where a lot of that color got left in around the edges here, and that's where the areas where I'm showing up is white. Now, since my paper is a slight bit damp, that color is going to diffuse just a bit. Now, I didn't wet it very, very much, so um, you might not see a huge difference here, but let's just see how we go. And I, I'm just sticking with one color. I don't want any distractions. I think the leaf itself is so very pretty that um, colors, different colors would just be a distraction and they wouldn't really help. Now I'm going to apply my second coating and it's a much thinner color application. So I, you can see more green through here. It's much wa a lot more watery and I just just to show you that there how to get some of these variations and I'm going to change the direction a little bit. But the process is still the same. Press it down, press it into the paper. And now you're going to see what a more liquid application of water does. So you see how there's more puddles, there's a little bit more splotchiness. Um, when it dries, it's going to dry a little bit lighter. I'm just going to keep going. I'm going to If you want to press without that paper on top, that's fine. You, you are risking getting maybe some of your fingerprints on here if you have any paint on your fingers. You just want to be careful. Okay, so that's good. Let's see, I'd like to have maybe one more here and then another in that corner. So this is what I was going to show you. I might have to end up going over this again, but if you want to just sort of mist your leaf, this might end up being a background print. I don't know how this is going to come out. Um, and just that, sort of lay it down and do that. Now you're going to get a much lighter, much more um, softer effect, or you should, because I didn't add any more paint. It's just water, so I just sort of lightened up. So see how that's more of just like a shadowy print as opposed to these big bold colors in here and it's nice to sort of mix it up like that to have some variations. All right so I'm sort of happy with that. I'm going and I'm so this is so pretty. <laughs> I'd like to preserve that leaf just like that if I could. Okay, so now I'm gonna pull out maybe something a little bit smaller. If I can find a smaller, like this, a smaller maple leaf that I really like. Get some more paint. thing I love about watercolor, one of the many, many things I love about watercolor is that it's fine if it dries up. You can always reactivate it with water 
So I don't have to worry about putting too, too much on here at any one time. I can let it dry and then next time I'm ready to pull it back out again, it could be months later, and I just squirt it with water and reactivate it and it's just like new, so. All right, so I think I have probably a very thick application of paint on here. And you can kind of tell, you know, once you get it on your leaf, you can tell by the color on your leaf. That's not too bad, it's not too dark. Again, I'm just going to sort of try to fill in some of these empty spaces I'm seeing here and protect the paper against my fingers. Lift. And you can see how it's got like a finer detail. At this point, I'm going to speed up the video a bit as I continue to add more and more prints onto my piece until I am happy with it. I like looking at too is the negative space so I like the placement of the leaves but I'm looking at these negative spaces in here and trying to decide if they're interesting or if they're distracting and I find this big negative space here a little bit distracting it needs to be broken up and I'm going to break it up with the little leaves So that pattern's a lot more interesting to me. It, it reminds me of sort of like dappled shadows that you get when you walk underneath a tree. So I love what's going on here. That's kind of pulling me through the piece. This, again, I'm not crazy about it. So um, I don't have to fill it in with just that one leaf. I'm gonna see if I can find another little leaf. Maybe this one. And start kind of alternating between those. So I'll just show you how pretty that is. to soften up some of those stark white areas in here. I'm just using my leaf as a little bit of a, like a texturizer. Very pretty. I see something just right in there, and I just want something soft there. All right, the 
this piece is done. I transformed my leaf print into this encaustic glazed handmade journal. If you'd like to learn more, please check out my website at bluequarry.com.